So, General Keith Waddell, our Adjutant General from the state of Louisiana, couldn't be with us this morning, so he sent us a video message introducing his governor to us. So please play the video. Good afternoon, Nord Nation. My name is Keith Waddell, the Adjutant General of Louisiana National Guard. Major General Lee Hopkins and Colonel Greg St. Germain are here today on my behalf to honor a man who is most deserving of his prestigious award. Governor John Bell Edwards is married to his wife Donna, and they have three children, Samantha Bell, Sarah Ellen, and John Bell. Governor Edwards has a personal history with the military. He's a West Point graduate and a United States Army veteran served on active duty for eight years, earning airborne, ranger, and jump master status, culminating with the command of a rifle company in the 82nd Airborne Division. He is also Louisiana's 56th governor, first elected in 2016 and re-elected in 2020. Prior to his service as Louisiana's commander-in-chief, he served in the Louisiana House of Representatives and ran a civil law practice. He's a great friend of the military with the people. I'm okay, sure. a stronger advocate for the National Guard and our military. <laughs> Governor Edwards' support of the National Guard's federal mission is second to none. The Louisiana National Guard okay. has deployed nearly 6,000 service members to 12 main missions in 16 different countries during his tenure as governor. With more deployment scale, we'll move back to the podium. Okay, thank Governor you. Governor Edwards is no stranger to state emergencies. Since he took office in January 2016, which was a time when South Louisiana experienced a 500-year flood event, Governor Edwards provided exceptional leadership. He understands the Guard's impact on the state and its communities. In the last two and a half years, Louisiana has experienced COVID-19, multiple major hurricanes, tropical storms, a snow and ice event, floods, multiple tornadoes, and over 110 cyber incidents. And Governor Edwards' leadership is everywhere. Perhaps what has been most impactful, but also less known, is the governor's work in cybersecurity policy. Governor Edwards led Louisiana's effort to pioneer groundbreaking methods to its cybersecurity response plans. From the beginning of his time in office, he understood the cyber threat and made it clear that cybersecurity is one of the most important challenges we face as a nation. It remains one of his top priorities. Governor Edwards is a co-chair of the Cyber Response Center at the National Governors Association and significantly influenced policy within the cybersecurity domain nationwide. He is one of 10 governors appointed by President Biden to participate in the Council of Governors, where he currently serves as the co-chair of the Cybersecurity Working Group. This is Governor Edwards' second time in the Council. In 2017, he established the Louisiana Cybersecurity in an effort to protect the state's IT networks, defend critical infrastructure, build a cybersecurity workforce, develop state legislation, and enhance private partnerships. In July of 2019, several school districts experienced ransomware attacks. Governor Edwards declared a state of emergency. This was one of the first such declared responses in the nation. Multiple state agencies, including the National Guard, as well as federal agencies, such as the FBI, the Secret Service, and the Department of Homeland Security, as well as private sector resource partners, came together to combat the attacks. Governor Edwards, thank you for what you do for our state and our nation. Your significant contributions to the security and defense doctrine of the United States of America are incredible. Your service embodies the noblest ideas of patriotism and is recognized by the men and women who proudly wear the uniform and protect what matters each other. And now, it's my honor to introduce one of this year's Harry S. Truman awardees, Louisiana's governor, Governor John Bell Edwards. That was, that was a special, yes. uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate you, General, thank you. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. There we go. Look at there. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. Not gonna fit on my carry-on though. You're, you're gonna have to bring it. <laughs> Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Sure.
So, Governor, we just want to thank you again for being here with us today. And uh, the podium is yours. Please. Thank you so much, Major General Boyles. It is a great pleasure to be with all of you this morning. I also want to thank my Adjutant General, uh, Major General Keith Waddell for those kind words, but really for his exemplary leadership. And it has been a pleasure to work alongside him and all the men and women of the Louisiana National Guard. I do want to recognize a dear friend, a classmate, someone who commanded a company in the same battalion at the same time I did, and the 3rd Battalion of the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne Division, and that is General Pappas. And I am so proud of you, General Pappas. <clears throat> also, I want to recognize Major General John Harris, General Frank Grass, Brigadier General Retired Roy Robinson as well. Uh, it's so wonderful to be here with all of you. Donna and I are truly honored uh, to be in your presence. To be honest with you, this award is much more reflection on the, I'm sorry, the superb work that General Waddell and all the men and women do of the Louisiana National Guard than it is upon me. But I appreciate it so much. Uh, I want you to know that our soldiers and our airmen inspire me every single day. General Waddell mentioned a number of the challenges we've had in Louisiana, especially natural disasters. And I can tell you that at least in recent history, I can't imagine there's a state that has leaned on their National Guard more than the state of Louisiana. And ours has always performed superbly. I certainly didn't realize what a central and essential role the Guard would play in my administration. You know, today, is the one year anniversary of Hurricane Ida, which came ashore in Southeast Louisiana as the strongest storm to ever make landfall in our state. Of course, it tied with Hurricane Laura, whose anniversary was this past Saturday, which was just one year earlier than that. In fact, during the COVID pandemic, since March of 2020, we've had five hurricanes hit Louisiana two of them the strongest ever. You may know that today is also the 17th anniversary of Hurricane Katrina. That storm forever altered the lives of so many along the Gulf Coast. But I do wanna take a moment to point out how far we've come over the past 17 years. Since Hurricane Katrina, we've actually invested, thanks to the generosity of the American people, $14.5 billion in a hurricane storm damage risk reduction system in the five parishes around the greater New Orleans area. And last year, it performed superbly. But the fact of the matter is, nothing reassures the people of our state and makes them feel confident and secure like the presence of soldiers and airmen of the National Guard when we have a natural disaster. It is more important than the levees, than the pumps, than the gates. Between 2020 and 2021, we actually had 65 storm-related deaths. The vast majority of those occurred in the aftermath of the storms related to carbon monoxide poisoning, cleanup accidents, heat stroke, and the like. Very few of the deaths were actually related to the initial and direct impact of the storms. In any tragic, any death I should say is tragic, and we want to make sure that that number is zero if it's at all possible. But I think about how many more lives we would have lost had it not been for our National Guard and our other first responders. And I want you to know we're doing all of these things in the National Guard in Louisiana while we perform all of our other missions, all of our training and deployments. And in fact, late in 2020, after we'd been in the pandemic for a number of months, after we had had four hurricanes, we actually deployed the 256th Infantry Brigade to the Middle East. They actually had prepared their equipment multiple times, then we had to go back and use it to respond to disasters, but they were able to deploy successfully. 
and defend our country. I'm very, very proud of our National Guard. I hesitate to say this because I know that every state is represented here today, but I happen to think in Louisiana we have the best National Guard, General Hopkins. You know, one of the long-term missions that I'm most proud of is cybersecurity, not something that we focused on as a country or as a state before just a few years ago. The general gave an overview of the mission and how it's evolved in our state. And it is a huge challenge, but it's also a big opportunity because there are 500,000 cyber jobs available in the United States today. We don't have the trained and educated people to fill them, so that offers us an opportunity. And many of our college campuses now are offering degree programs in cybersecurity. Some were the first in the country to do so. And many of those programs are partnered with the military sciences on those campuses. We've also partnered with private industry to address these real and immediate threats. Now take a second to think about the partners that we've involved in the effort. The military, elected officials, our higher education institutions, private industry, law enforcement. How often these days can you say that such a wide variety of viewpoints and professions can come together around a common goal? It is a remarkable, encouraging thing to see. And as I close, I want to share with you that Donna and I two weeks ago had the great opportunity to go to Europe on an economic development trip. And we spent a couple of days in Normandy. And I will never forget the visit to the American cemetery. Thousands of Americans are buried there. And when you're in that cemetery overlooking Omaha Beach and you see the grave sites of thousands of Americans and you know that 70% of those who died actually returned home to be buried, you can't help but think that so many things that are distracting us and dividing this are really insignificant when you get right down to it and petty. And so I just want all of us to realize that we are Americans, first and foremost, and that we ought to embrace diversity of thought, skills, opinions, it really do make our country great. And I think we ought to think about all the sacrifice, and by the way, there was no sacrifice greater than that of the 29th Infantry Division in Normandy, made up of National Guard units. We should think about that sacrifice, yeah. And allow it to inspire us every single day to be better Americans, to make sure that we secure the future. And being here with you today has certainly inspired me, and I can, I look forward to continuing to work together to protect this country that we all love. And again, thank you so much uh, for this award. It really means more to me than I can say. So thank you so much, and God bless, and God bless America. Thank you, General. Thank you. Governor Edwards, thank you for your service and for your support of the National Guard, truly. Um, Louisiana's state partnership program is with Belize and Haiti. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a Christmas ornament as a memento for you for speaking to us today that captures 13 state partnership flags of the original 13 state partnerships. The program has been in place since 1993, and we'd like to give this to you to put on your Christmas tree this Christmas. Absolutely. So thank you so much for thank speaking you, with us today. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. It's beautiful. Well, the Sergeant at Arms, please escort our distinguished guest and his party from the platform. 